Hey guys, welcome back. So first things first, a new version of Bulma version 0.6.2 came out this week. So I'd like to update the dependency in our project here. So let's go back to Atom. If you go to package JSON, we're just gonna update from 0.61 to 0.62. Let's save the file. And let's do npm install. And that's gonna replace the dependency for us. So once that's done, let's do npm start. That's gonna start the server for us. Let's open the dev tools, very good. Right back in the project here, let's go to countdown.js. So the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like us to create a set of buttons. So I want us to create a pause button as well as a resume button so that you can stop the timer as well as resume it. So a very simple idea that's gonna help us in exploring the idea of properties as well as parent-child communication. So let's create a new component here. Let's call it controls.js. And let's do import react from react. That's the first thing we always have to do. And next, let's create a function. We're going to call it controls. I'm going to use arrow functions as usual. And it's going to receive properties. OK, there's only one argument to the function props. Next thing is let's do, let's see, let's go to the documentation of Bulma. Let's see, documentation, and let's go to elements, and I believe buttons. So for buttons, this is basically what the buttons look like. And what I'm actually looking for is, let's see, a button group, there we go. I'm just gonna copy that over. We're gonna have two buttons here, let's see. Let's remove that, so let's adjust the styling here just a little bit. Let's move that, so we're gonna have two buttons. Okay, that looks good. One of the buttons is going to be pause, and the other one is going to be resume. Okay, looks good. So, let's see. Let's make one of them is danger. And by the way, if you go back to the docs, you can see all the classes here. I pretty much know them by heart by now, but if you're not sure, you can always go back. See here, for example, if I wanted to use a red button, it makes sense for like a pause button or a stop button. We can use is danger class. And for resume button, I guess we're going to use success, which is basically green. So it's going to be is success class. So let's go back. Is danger. The other one is going to be is success. The other thing you could also do is we could do is outlined. Well, in fact, let's go back to the application itself. Let's see what we have here. OK, so we don't have anything yet. And that's because we need to put the controls in the countdown timer, right? So let's go in here, and of course, can't forget to do export default controls. That's going to be our functional component. And back in here, let's do, let's go in here, let's do import controls from controls. They're in basically on the same level. So we could just use a relative path like that. And let's go in here, let's see, where can we put them? Let's put them just below the section. So I'm going to do controls like so. If you go back, you can already see them here. Okay, the one thing we forgot to do though is we need to make sure we replace class with class name because class is not a valid, well, it is a valid property because class in, uh, in ES6 identifies a class as we saw, right? In countdown, for example, that's a class, right? So. We can't use class because it's a reserved keyword. I think I mentioned it before. So we need to use class name. And class name is exactly what we need. So back in here, we got our buttons. And the other thing I'd like to do with them, so let's go back to controls. The other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a class as outlined. And let's see what that looks like. That's basically going to add an outline to the buttons, as you can see right there. And you can see the same thing in the docs right here. This is the class I'm using as outlined, okay? So back in the editor, the other thing I want to do is I'm also going to add is rounded class. And this is a new class that's been added. Let's see, is rounded, exactly. 6.2, that's the version when this class was added. That's why I wanted to pull it in. And this is basically going to make the buttons rounded. Now the next thing is because the contrast between red and blue isn't really that nice, I think what we're gonna do is back in app.js, actually no, in countdown.js, I'm going to change from is info to is dark. This is going to make the background basically dark, okay? And that looks much better. Now in countdown.js, the next thing I'll do is I'll change from 
div section. Let's see, where's that div? I'm just gonna hide that. So I want to change from a div to a section because section makes more sense semantically. In fact, if you open up the docs, let's go to overview. Let's see, I'm gonna go to layout section. That's what they recommend using. If you have a section, so an element with a class of section, it makes sense to use a section wrapper. So just a small thing. It doesn't really affect styling in any sense, but just semantically makes more sense. So that looks good to me. The only thing is, let's make these buttons centered. There's actually a class for that. So if you go back to buttons, and the section that we looked at was the section for buttons that were actually grouped. If I could just find it right there, is grouped. But there's also another class that's called is grouped centered. And if you go to the form, and let's search for centered. As that on center, there we go. So we have a div here with a class of field and also is grouped. So if you add a class that's known as is grouped centered, that's basically going to center the block, in this case, a block with buttons. And this is precisely what we want. So let's add that class as well. And here we go, we've got the buttons. Next, I'm gonna add a class is medium. That's gonna make the buttons a little bit larger for us to see, like so. So that looks good. Okay, so this is pretty much it. So now the idea is basically that the buttons need to be able to control the state of the counter. So whenever you click on the pause button, this is supposed to make the countdown stop. And if you click on resume, that's basically going to resume the countdown. So back in countdown.js, let's add a new property here. And I'm going to call it paused, okay? And by default, it's going to be false. And we're gonna pass that property to our controls okay so we're gonna pass a paused property and it's going to be and it's going to be this state paused in fact you can see here that we have a duration we're basically using the structure in order to get that we could also get paused so that we don't have to do this sort of thing so we could just call paused directly let's also instead of using anchors like links let's actually use buttons and you're gonna see in a moment why that makes a lot more sense so let's use buttons Okay, and the reason I switched from anchors to buttons is because of the disabled attribute. So the idea here is basically the following. We want to disable the pause button if the countdown timer is paused, right? So it makes sense to enable the resume button so that you can click on it and resume the timer. At the same time, if the countdown timer is not paused or meaning active, it's currently active, it makes sense to disable the resume button but keep the pause button alone. So hope that makes sense and let's actually go in here and implement it. So like I said, it makes sense to disable the pause button if the pause property is true. And it makes sense to disable the resume button if the pause property is not true. And in fact, because we only have one property, let's also use the structuring here. So I'm gonna have pause here as the only argument and I'm gonna remove the props from in there. Just gonna keep it as a single variable.